There are passionate and vicious debates taking place these days, and it runs the gamut from the sanctity of life, gender identity, or even just simply expressing your faith in Jesus. Come and join us for another episode of The Battle for the Truth, The Spirit of Truth, on the way. Welcome to The Way with Leslie King and Scott Grimmett. The ocean, how it sways in the sun. Now, the spirit of truth is the Holy Spirit. It's the word of truth, right. and it's the knowledge of truth. But I think before we start to go forward, it's really important for us to do a quick review, because individuals can think that they can read the Bible and gain wisdom and knowledge and somehow enlighten themselves without first believing the testimony of the truth. So last week in our first episode, the testimony of the truth, the testimony of Jesus, it all starts there. And nobody can believe anything other than about Jesus and lay the foundation there first and then begin to gain eternal truth in God. And yes, people can have degrees, and yes, people can get smarter in the world, but that's earthly wisdom and carnal knowledge. Right. And what we're talking about and getting out is this idea of having truth that is eternal, that helps us to have a weapon of living a life while we're here in a hostile world. Right. And I think we need to, just before we move forward, we need to go ahead and make sure everyone remembers, if you haven't seen that episode, go back and watch that one so you understand the context that you don't skip to just opening the Bible and reading it. Right. You absolutely have to have the belief and the faith inherently in Jesus. That's right. It starts with Jesus. It starts with Jesus. He did all that work. The interesting part about the rest of our topic and the ones going forward, it kind of requires effort on our part. That's right. It requires dedication because uh, I know that I've seen it, and sometimes I maybe have fallen guilty to this, and that is you get tired of pursuing understanding, or you're somewhere where they say, well, you're saved and you're done, and then you become some spiritual couch potato, and you never grow beyond being at the cross where Jesus did all the work. He didn't do all the work so that we would just sit around and do nothing with our faith, right? No, not at all. So I think that uh, the listeners and those watching, make sure that you watch the testimony of the truth. And I also want to remind everybody that we do have a companion devotional, that if you come to our website, thetruthandthelife.com, you can get that. It has a lot more scriptures and is a little bit more meatier in there, but it's a devotional. goes right along with some of the discussions. Absolutely is. So I think that before we get going, I need to share a little bit of an illustration, Ah, because we need to know the importance of why is the truth and gaining knowledge, teaching and learning after salvation important. And so Tracy and I, my wife, we head down to vacation along the East Coast of the United States um, pretty regularly, uh, Georgia, North Carolina. One year, traveling down, I had a friend kind of tell me, well, do you, you know, what kind of map, how do you go? And I you know, showed him the old-fashioned map and you know, kind of old school that Brand way. Brandon McNally, huh? <laughs> That's exactly it. Printed that up and had it right there. She was kind of the navigator, co-pilot. Uh, he laughed at me and said, you need to use a GPS. And I was like, okay, I'm not sure I trust them. He goes through this whole scenario of, you know, it's bouncing off of satellites, it's updated maps, and really is convincing and tells me you can rely on them. Well, lo and behold, we're heading out of uh, the state, and we're getting down into the mountains. Next thing I know, I hear the GPS say, 500 feet, turn to the right. (laughs) And of course, uh, I'm going, I don't really think that the East Coast is going to be a right-hand turn going west. No. Uh, But I hear my friends say, you can trust it. It's reliable. Just do it. So I'm figuring, oh, this could be some sort of a shortcut. It wasn't a shortcut at all. Eventually, the um, highway turnoff turned into a three-lane. Then it went into a two-lane. The next thing I know, we're winding our way through the hills, uh-huh. and it's clear we're lost. And, of course, Tracy's just going nuts. She's like, I can't believe you listened to that you know, device and things like that. <laughs> we ended up winding through the hills. It's getting dark. 
We hit a deer and we actually put ourselves at risk, my family. That wasn't on the map though, right? That part was not on the map yeah. and GPS all of a sudden got really quiet when we were in the mountains I there. I it did. And so I say all of this because I don't think anybody wants to have misinformation or wrong information right. given to them going to their vacation let alone as they're heading towards being like Jesus and as they're pursuing eternity. And right. so... It's, it's important then. Well, there's a lot of GPSs out there, right? Man. There's this person, there's that person. There's, satellites. There's, there's a lot of misinformation. Yeah. And I think that's the most important thing as we go forward. And Jesus makes it very clear that he says... Truly, I say to you, he said that over and over again, truly, I say to you, it's that important to Jesus that we have the truth, that we understand the truth. He said, I came to testify to the truth. That's right. And so as we move forward, it's not okay to get misinformation or to be casual about this. No. And if all you do is sit around and you're a spiritual couch potato and all you ever do is just listen to what other people say, you're going to get variances in what the truth really is. Yes, you will. And so there are a variety, right? So there's relative truths, and that's what people will give you. Based on their last experience and their opinion, they're going to give you um, a life experience truth right. that we need to be very careful about. Well, you have to be very careful about a lot of things. People, A lot of people get certainty and the truth mixed up. Yeah. Certainty is not the truth. Someone could tell you a lot of things and be absolutely certain about it. Yes. And they and you look into the facts and you realize that they don't know what they're talking about. At That's all. right. They have somehow, in the discourse of learning, they have somehow separated themselves from the truth. And they have they have led themselves astray and everybody else that they're talking to. You know, the uh whenever a yep. whenever a cop you, you, you get this with uh, a situation where someone wrecks. You know, you have a little fender bender. Okay, okay. Cops shows up. There's two people there. They're at each other's throat. You have two versions of the truth going on. Okay. And the cop's first job will be to separate that out. Who's telling the truth? Some people, sometimes, they're both thinking that they're telling the truth. Right. Uh, right. And, and, but they're, what they're seeing is different angles that they're coming at their own truth. Um, most of the time, someone's not telling the truth. So, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but the scary thing is, is you're right. Individuals can be so passionate about what they believe right. that they lose sight of the fact that it's not about what we believe. It's about what God has shared with us and given us in the Bible, and we need to be very careful of that. Well, yeah, because the old axiom is, and this goes not back forever, and that is, you know, there are three sides to every story. <laughs> there's, there's, you know, there's your side, there's my side, and there's the truth. Then there's the truth, right? right. Exactly. In, in a perfect world, in a good situation, you know, we are lined up with that truth so that we're actually getting the right signal. We're actually lined in, and we're actually are, you know, talking to the truth. But once in a while, you know, it is very common for people to be absolutely certain, and they are so stinking wrong, right? right. And and you have to have wisdom to the the brain is a funny thing, by the way. Speaking of wisdom. It is, the, the brain's a weird thing, man. It, it certainly is. Uh, you, I have sat next to and worked with so many brilliant people in my life who had right. educations and were, 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 were highly knowledgeable in their field. Right. You know, they work calculus during the day and then go do the stupidest things at night. They had absolutely, <laughs> they had all the knowledge in the world and all the things that, yeah. that they were armed to do certain aspects of their job and of their life. The term stupid is a stupid does comes to mind every time. It's like, it, yeah. Forrest Gump had more wisdom than this, you know? It was like... <laughs> There's something to be said about even wisdom, even knowledge, when it's taken away from the truth. That's right. Can be corrupted. There is absolutely nothing that does not corrupt when you take it apart from the truth. That's right. And we need to continue to think about this a little bit because there are people that are very well intending with their perspective, but they could be completely off base, or it can be a mix of things. That's why there must be a standard. That's exactly it. That's why. That's that's why. And in the end, you must always be able to appeal to a higher standard. It's got to be higher than your standard, my standard. In a perfect world, we're looking together to find that standard together. Absolutely. You're looking yeah. for the truth. That's you know, right. And I don't want to have uh, my truth at the expense of somebody else. Absolutely not. If it's not right, then I don't want to be browbeating somebody into my opinion because I think I just want to be right in that, in that conversation. There's a lot of people who just want to be right. They don't care about the truth so much as they want to come out on top of a given conversation. Absolutely. The Bible's very clear that a wise person 
enjoys and relishes rebuke or correction, yeah. meaning the fact that they want to be shown the truth, and they find it um, a great opportunity to actually have someone tell them that they're wrong instead right. of going into fight mode and attack mode. And so as we begin to unpack this, we're going to be talking um, inherently about teaching and learning. So we leave the cross, and then we're going to start heading into, what do I do now as a Christian? Right. You need to begin to learn about the Bible, because that's the standard that you mentioned. Right. And that truth is what we all need to mold to, and not what we think it is. And there's a lot of people out there, churches, seminaries, um, that actually interpret the Bible in very weird ways right. that you know that just can't be true because... Right. Well, building on what we said last week, truth is not a thing, but a person. That's that is right. a him. Right. You know, Jesus is the truth. I am the truth, the way, the, way, the truth, the life. So uh, in, this, in this conversation, we, we come across the exact same thing. The spirit <laughs> of truth, once again, is a he. That's exactly it. Is, it. it, it it's, it's the great Holy Spirit of God. Right. Jesus thought it was so important that in his last discourse with his disciples, he said, I must leave so I can send the advocate. That's right. I must go so the spirit of truth can be sent to you. So here they're going, stay with us, be with us. And he tells them, no, it's better for me to leave. He tells them that. Why? Because now it's time for us, after we're saved at the cross, to start to engage life, grow in our faith, and really pursue what God has for us because God doesn't want us sitting with a pacifier until he returns. No. He wants us growing up. He wants us growing up. Yeah, we always get very excited when we have a book devotional that accompanies a particular podcast series. And in this instance, we have a devotional by the name of Walking in the Truth that accompanies our pod series, The Battle for the Truth. Never in modern times has the truth been under attack like what we are currently seeing. Vicious debates are raging over the sanctity of life, over sexuality, over gender identity, over the very existence of a loving God. Although Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20 sternly warns against calling evil good and good evil, this seems to be the sad condition of our society these days. This devotional is dedicated to the only absolute truth that we have in this fallen world. The Holy Bible and the scriptures therein are given to us by a loving God to help us find our way home. The attack on the truth is simply the process of calling the goodness of God evil and the evil of Satan good, and it's a blatant attempt to try to bring down the goodness of God to be equal to man or even below Satan. Walking in the Truth devotional covers key scriptures ranging anywhere from the testimony of truth in Jesus to how the Holy Spirit is involved in our walk as Christians to lead us into truth. And then it comes to a close with the judgment of the truth from God, which is kind of a rather heavy chapter, but really brings it home to make sure folks understand that God is paying very close attention to how we accept the truth and how we apply it to our lives. Readers will also have a personal reflection and prayer section for every verse covered. To learn how you can purchase Walking in the Truth, come visit our bookstore on thetruthandthelife.com and thank you for taking your time to support the Truth and the Life broadcast. This is like not the first time this has ever come up. Um, in the book of Hosea, um, I think it's in chapter 4, verse 4, he goes on to tell them that they are lost because of lack of knowledge. And what was going on at that time right. was the fact that, you know, there was Israel and they began to split into two nations. There was the northern and the southern, and both fractions were against each other, but the northern fraction called Israel, the southern was Judah, actually began to develop their own religious system. They had shrine prostitutes. They uh, sacrificed their children. Yeah. Um, they did all kinds. In fact, it actually ended up saying that in the Bible that your sin breaks all bounds in its bloodshed after bloodshed. I know. And what ends up happening is God ended up carrying them off into captivity and destroying them because they rejected his and then truth. Some. Oh, and then some, <laughs> uh, for sure. And I think that the Bible's true. This is important. So it's just, we're just not bringing this up. It's just not a New Testament thing. It's absolutely about the fact of if you don't have knowledge, 
then you'll see hard times and destruction, and you will not grow in your faith. No. So everyone is sitting there thinking, I'm saved, I'm done, Jesus did it all, I can do nothing else. I think you're headed towards some hard times for the future because of the battle of the truth. Right, and it does no good to water anything down. The moment you water down truth, you completely kill it entirely. Correct. Some things cannot be diluted without ruining it. And, it, and when you try to water down the truth, it ruins yeah. Uh, and so it's C.S. Lewis's day. He called it uh, soft soaping, soft soap theolo- theology. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't work today because we've, since his day, you know, soft soap has been <laughs> perfected, you know? It's, it's, it's the norm, right? It's the norm, right. <laughs> right. Back in his day, they had the perception, the perception that it, you had to have that gritty bar on your skin to wipe off a couple of layers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, you had to take some <laughs> skin off with the dirt. Uh, but, you know, but the analogy stands. It's what he was actually saying is you cannot dilute the truth. And it would do us no good to sit here and tell people anything that's going to just make them feel better True. about themselves without challenging, True. without iron sharpening iron. That's right. You know, if they want that, there are a hundred other shows out there that just make you feel good. <laughs> that's right. You know, it's we warm want, and fuzzy. Right. We, we want you to feel good, but we want to actually be helpful. We want to actually help yeah. in this discourse to bring people to a better knowledge Absolutely. and to know that the truth cannot be diluted. And you mentioned C.S. Lewis, and I, and I love his discourse on truth, and he says, if you seek truth, you will find comfort. But if you seek comfort, you will not find truth, but only pain. That's right. And so just a wise man. And, and I think that everyone's trying to find comfort, and they think the comfort is through Jesus' work at the cross. Jesus' work at the cross is about salvation in, for a relationship and about eternity. Right. But... There's hardship ahead of us when we're pursuing the truth, learning the truth, and then applying the truth to our lives. And that's the part that God wants to see us grow that's in, right. which is really important. Well, so. And we tend to look, find what we're looking for. You know, yeah. In life, that's just one of the axioms Even of life. Even when it's that, not there. That's right. That's right. If, if, we're, <laughs> if we want to find something bad enough, we will find it. Yeah. You know, we'll find evidence of things that really aren't there. But, you know, we yeah. want it there, so the people, you'd be surprised how often that happens, where it's like, there's nothing really there, but they're so desperate to find it that they'll find something. And in Jesus' day, you know, when you actually listen to, uh, when you actually read Josephus and some of the other scholars of the time who were mm-hmm. giving a good historical narrative, uh, they, they reveal that before Jesus' day, there had been several uh, messiahs rise up. That's that, right. That were, were trying to lead people to believe that they were the son of God. Somehow, my theory is, and this is just my theory, I don't know if it's true or not, but my theory is, is that word of the miraculous birth of Christ had leaked out. It had gotten out. To that point, you know, there were other people who were uh, like of the, of the Sanhedrin at the time. They were, yeah. they were looking for what they wanted to see. Every person they saw was a false prophet. Every person they saw claiming to be the son of God was false. That's right. That's why when Jesus hit this scene... He was just one of another. He was just one of a of a of a run of people who had risen up to, to claim that he was the Messiah, That's and right. they were going to stomp his guts out, and they yeah. and they would not be convinced. And of course, it didn't help the fact that they were wicked to begin with, and right, and they were uh, corrupt. They were corrupt right. as all get out. But that was part of uh, the psychology that went into the attack. So fierce, they were determined to find what they were seeking. Right. Well, I think it's a good example there. Um, they didn't believe in Jesus, the testimony of truth. So they could never understand the truth, and so they didn't recognize him when God sent him, even though they were waiting for the Messiah. Well, they weren't interested in the truth. No, I, I don't think they were either. So I think that that is a really good point, Grimmett. Um, As we kind of look at this, we need to understand that God has his Bible, we need to read it, and we need to use that as the plumb line. It's the standard. But Jesus, coming back to the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth right. that guides us into all truth— that is also the word of truth, right? We need to make sure that we're listening closely. And I think what we end up doing, and, and I'm and I'm default for this too. I'm not I'm not blaming anyone else. You know, you go seek out the advice of others, right. which I think is totally fine because I think you should be willing to hear and listen to others. But when you come back to it, are we really taking the time to allow the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, to confirm the word in us? And to have the word of truth confirmed in us, and to allow the Holy Spirit to grow us in the truth, the knowledge of the truth, we need to spend time in the Bible. We need to dedicate ourselves to that. And I think one of the greatest neglects of Christians today is they go to church, and that's all that happens. They get a little bit on Sunday, and then what's meant to be the bread of life, the word, 
is not eaten for another week. And you know what happens when you don't eat the Word, when you're not daily nourishing on the Word of God? Um, there's going to be some atrophy. Uh, um, there's going <laughs> to be malnutrition. Right. Um, illness comes after malnutrition, and eventually um, some sort of death, That's right? right? Spiritual death to some extent. And I'm not saying that people aren't saved that aren't reading the Bible. I'm just saying they're not working out their purpose that God has for them to grow in the truth. I think that's very important for everyone to realize that you got to engage in this. You got to have an intentional plan, and it won't be easy. In fact, Jesus made it clear it wasn't easy for him. It's not going to be easy for us. Yes, salvation was easy. That's where it stops, to be quite honest. Easy with you. for us, yes. Yes. It wasn't easy for him. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, most certainly. No. It was easy for us at the cross because we didn't get on it. He did. But going forward, our commitment to the faith. So salvation was free. Our commitment and our walk in the faith will cost us everything. Right, and there's no escaping it. No, no absolutely not. Not whatsoever, because the spirit of truth is the mighty Holy Spirit. His presence fills this earth as water does an aquarium True. or an ocean, True. giving life to everything within. Mm-hmm. Right, that's that's one of the reasons why you cannot escape the Holy Spirit, because we are literally, he, he gives us breath. In Job, it says yes. that... Uh, if, if the Spirit of God were withdrawn from us, all life would instantly perish. Just drop. It, 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 right. That's Absolutely. one of the reasons why in, in eschatology, you know, the, the whole thing of the Holy Spirit being withdrawn from us is ridiculous, because if that happened, the world would stop. The world right. would end. Yeah, existence uh, would be gone. Right. So in, w- even in the world, though, they, there's an acknowledgement of this, because in the world, when you have people who don't believe in God, they will say something that is fascinating and has a, par- it has okay. a parallel to what we're discussing here. You'll hear people all the time, and from from the time you're a kid to to when you die, they'll say someone will have a, a check, and they'll have they'll they'll get worried about something. Yeah, that gut thing. Going and, and they'll, yeah, and they'll say, "I have a gut feeling. This is wrong. I have mm-hmm. a feeling sure. in my gut." It's, don't you think it's an odd thing that they would choose the gut? They, it was like, <laughs> why why not a head? Well, something's going wrong with my head. But it's always the gut. Yeah. And it's and it's acknowledged among the the, the the theological. The spirit of man actually resides in the abdomen area. Okay. It's, we, we, we refer to it as, you know, we have him in our heart, but actually it's here. Okay, yeah, uh, the, I didn't know that. The, the, yeah. the spirit of man. So, yeah. so the world just naturally, not even acknowledging God, says, I have this gut feeling. It just doesn't feel right. That's okay. Holy Spirit dealing with everybody. And I tell you where this really comes in big is okay, that I'm following you. there are no exemptions. There will, there will be nobody stand before the throne of God and say, I right. didn't know. Not you just... didn't tell me. Right. You didn't. You weren't faithful to tell me anything. The Holy Spirit's working with everybody. You got it. He just doesn't live in everybody. He doesn't live in everybody, but he is faithful to all of his children. Yeah, well, that's how we come into the faith. That's right. We're pursued by the Holy Spirit. That's right. He is with us, and he is telling us. And even, yeah. the, even, yeah. the, even the most rancid sinner yeah. on earth, at the moment of yeah. his sin... Is is feeling that tug? Oh, maybe I shouldn't do that. This maybe this is not the right way to go. Right. That's Holy Spirit. There Absolutely. Will be, there will be no excuses on the day of judgment. Absolutely. And as far as people that we're losing, they call that provincial grace. It's the grace of God that pursues us even before we know Him and even before we deserve it. And that's what Jesus did he's, on the cross. He's good. Yeah. He's he is awesome, and he wants us to come to His truth. And he did so. He died on the cross, and as he says, I'm leaving so I can send the advocate. That's right. He's like going, I can't hang around forever. You know, I got other <laughs> things I need to do. I got some business, right? Even though he's alive and in and out. Okay, I'm with you there. So I think he's active. Uh, he is. But he, there was a, com- a very specific mission of the spirit of truth to help us grow in the word of truth so that we could have wisdom in the knowledge of truth. And that means we need to continue to learn and then we need to move into, are we discipling others and teaching others also? That's right. There will be, there will be no excuses when it comes right down to it. The, 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 the spirit of truth is faithful. He is holy. Yeah. And he never breaks any of his own laws. And, you know, the, the spirit of truth would have us speak the truth about all things. And including one of the major things that you don't even hear in public in public anymore. But when's the last time you heard yeah, a, a discourse on hell? hell? Yeah, I'm not when, talking about the punishment part. Do you see anything wrong with that? Jesus himself spoke of it so often. Right. He made points about it throughout the what we know as the Gospels. He never let it go. He wanted people to know that right. it would be better to cut your hand off and 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 go to heaven, uh, having if that was causing you to sin, cut your hand off, right. man. Rather than have the, the whole the whole body cast into hell, right. Jesus made these kinds of points. Read Matthew's five through seven; you can't escape it. Right? Yeah, better to go into heaven being called lefty, right, <laughs> and then to go into hell with having both hands. Right. right. And, and the so. whole point is this: is not to get people focused on hell. 
the, fo- the, the, right. the the purpose of this conversation is the spirit of truth. Truth doesn't endure dilution. That's right. There's, the, I spoke about relative truth based on people's life lived experiences, and we all have them. Um, so at one given time, my truth and my understanding is one thing. I live 10 years, have experiences, and that may change. That's a normal, but there's an absolute truth. And that absolute truth speaks to this whole thing that there is an eternal divine truth that no matter who you are, no matter where you at, it is truth. Do not murder. That's an example. Right. And it's in the Bible. It doesn't matter who you are or where you live or what your faith is or you're an atheist. Everyone can agree that there's an absolute truth like that that exists that we all can conform to. That came from God, and God put that in us. It didn't evolve in us over billions of years. It was put in us when we were created 6,000 years ago when he breathed in us. And so I think that as we begin to navigate this a little bit, it's really dangerous out there the way the battle is taking place. That's right. So if you start to say you believe in Jesus, you start to say you're reading the Bible, you start to say that you're adhering to biblical principles, the enemy gets a little bit mad. In fact, more than a little. And so we need to be careful of the enemy, Satan, and his demons, and his army intercepting the truth. Right. And this happens all the time. In fact, the devil and his army are watching you to make sure and studying you to see what are their weaknesses, just like Adam and Eve. He was watching them in the garden and figuring out what's their weakness, what is the opportunity for right. me to twist the, the word of God have, about the tree. That, and that's, that's the key right there. Yeah. He doesn't usually come out full force against the truth. No, no. His favorite thing is to just get in there and twist and make and just give you enough of the truth to make the lie seem true. That's exactly it. And, and I, I think he, he leverages our weaknesses that come along with us not being mature. Right. But, and right? That's, that's where you have, to ha- you have to stay into the Word of God, man. You have to stay in the Word of God. Let it read you, read it, stay in it. And uh, this gets into what I like to call holy triangulation. Okay. When you, when you get something from the Spirit of God, uh, and this... Okay. Yeah, where you ha- triangulate right. a problem down to where you're yeah. basically eliminating, eliminating, eliminating to where you get right down to Love the, that as a researcher. I'm with you. Absolutely. Okay, so the same thing. The Spirit of God, the, ho- the mighty Holy Spirit, will never give you a word that you cannot find, that cannot find confirmation in the in, Word of God. In the Word of God, He absolutely. will never give you anything that contradicts His Holy Word. He may give you something extra biblical, something that doesn't necessarily... But it won't. Yeah, but it, it won't be it unbiblical, won't, right? It won't be. It won't be anti-biblical. It won't right. go against the word of God. It won't yeah. contradict the word of God. It may. It may add to it. You know, we we've seen this for years. I mean, this may sound like a bad thing, but it's really not. For the hundreds of years now, uh, commentary writers, you know, theologians have read the word of God and expounded on it and written wrote, written commentaries that people like my dad used to form their sermons for years. It's okay, very good, very good things. It's, and it's all by the Spirit of God. Yeah, uh, that's that's not anti-biblical. That's that's extra biblical, uh, and yeah. it's very it's very helpful. But it does not at any point contradict the written word of God. Absolutely, God does not contradict Himself, yep. and He never will. Wait, there are certain things that are um, non-biblical, which means they're an extension of the Bible, and it's God continuing to write His story and express His character throughout all generations uniquely to individuals, whoever they might be and whatever they need. But this idea of being unbiblical, which means it contradicts or goes right. against the scriptures, and this gets back into the idea of the spirit of the truth. I leave the cross, I immediately have to immerse myself as a baby Christian in the Bible, in Bible studies, with other Christians, right. so that we can keep each other accountable and we can move forward and grow in the truth or our next step is just not going to be there because if you don't know what the truth is, then you're not going to know how to obey it and how to apply it to your life. And I think right. that's real important. And God never breaks his own laws, ever. Absolutely. Ever. He, what he set down as a law in Leviticus, I guarantee you, is still in his heart today. God right. does not change. He has never changed. He will never change. He has been perfect from the beginning. You know, he didn't wake up in a good mood one one day and decide to save mankind on the cross. <laughs> that was planned before Moses. Before he created us. That's right. Yeah, before he cr- created this existence. That's he right. knew exactly what it was going to take place. Yeah, so the argument that you can omit or uh, or undermine things that he said in the Old Testament, and again, the, yeah. any law that was written that leads us to the cross, like like the uh, like the 
sacrifices and yeah, everything like that. Yeah, sacrifices, the lamb, the rehearsals. The, the rehearsals, all that stuff. That, yeah. that was remediated at the cross, yep. indeed. But all the other laws of God persist to this day. Right. And uh, I, if you want to know how, how important truth is to God, uh, that list in Revelation that we've talked about, how the very first thing of all okay. the people who are going to be thrown into the lake of fire, yes, the first one is, is uh, as we've talked about, is cowardice. The cowards. Right. The one, coward. of, one of those are liars. Are liars. Liars. They're God. twisting the truth. That's right. They're lying about the truth. You have to be very, very careful. You right. to, uh, we, 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 we laugh about things, and, and you know, sometimes some lies are so ridiculous that they are funny, but um, God Almighty doesn't find anything funny Like about if lies. my wife's hair looks good, I can... No, uh, okay. That's, that, <laughs> that's self-preservation. It always looks good, by the way, okay? <laughs> yeah. And that whole, honey, does this look good on me? Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, called, that's where grace comes in. That's where grace, that's absolutely where grace comes in. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm tracking you there. So I, I think that Jesus really kind of lifts up the idea of us as sheep, how we follow. That's right. And how we bring that about. And that's how we can stay in, t- in tune with the truth. Right. My sheep know my voice. That's my what he told us. My sheep know my voice. And the voice of the Holy Spirit that's right. is his, and it's active and alive today. The scriptures are care- clear. The Holy Spirit's moving to and fro on the earth, looking for those who understand. Understand what? Uh, computers? Uh, the latest thing on the news? No. Understand the truths of God and who are applying that to their lives and moving forward with their mission and purpose. That's right. I think it's just like so important that we um, pull all this together so that our listeners and those who are watching can really understand this. So we're saved at the cross through the testimony of truth of Jesus. Then we move forward from there. And some of the most important parts of the spirit of the truth is to understand that the spirit, the Holy Spirit, is going to teach us and lead us to all truth, that we need to have communion with the spirit of the truth daily. Because right. if you start to walk away and you start to ignore it, how do you think Tracy, my wife, would feel if I only visited her on Sundays? All right. That isn't going to work out in a relationship very nicely, right? No. Same thing with the Holy Spirit. We Not need to be either. aware of that. Now, the word of truth then refers to the Holy Scriptures and the truth that's in them, and those are what we should have daily. Spirit of truth actually brings us forward to have daily bread in the truth, that's right. right? And then it begins to grow us in the truth, and that's the wisdom part of it. And we need to spend a significant amount of time and effort and intentionality to really go to this phase, and it's all up to us to do that. We need to seek the Bible. We need to be in community, and we need to be active instead of saying, I'll just watch church on YouTube. Right. I'll just sit in the pew, and then I'll get out of church as fast as I can. Right. You know. Or if you're in a house church or in your so other, some other dedicated time on your special day, your holy day, your Sabbath, or whatever you might be doing— that's about engaging, right. and then you leave that, and then you continue to engage. Right. And that is about the intentionality of growing in the truth. This is challenging. It is. You can wear you out. And then the truth can be painful. There is uh, um, an atheist that stated something about the truth some years ago, and he said, the truth first is absurd and rejected. Then the truth to somebody makes them hostile towards you. Right. And then the truth actually then becomes the norm and what's accepted and you can embrace it. So even this individual, this atheist, Arthur, um, Schoenpaul, I think is his name, or Schoenhauer, he actually was an atheist, a philosopher, and he was just he was just really kind of quite wacky. Right. But I think he had that one right. We need to, as believers, as we need to embrace the truth of Jesus, then we need to move forward working hard to learn the truth, to teach others the truth, and then to apply the truth in our lives. And unless we're doing that, we're not growing in the faith, that which was the purpose of Jesus on the cross. Right, and the scary part is it goes the other way around, too. If you have a lack of truth, if you have truth being diluted, if you have truth being ignored, right. then that also will become the norm to where you look around and you see some of the things like we see in our society right now. I'm not going to go into them right now, but there are some wacky, wacky things happening from the right. government down. Right. Uh, we we are we're in we're in a very bad state right now, and so uh, I think the whole point of this is that we're pulling for people. We're not trying to be buzzkills here. We're not Absolutely. trying to be hard on folks. You can do this, right? Yeah, you know, and that was the whole point of that talking the about the design. Holy Spirit. 
you know, actually dealing with every single human being. Absolutely. God Almighty is with you and wants to help us find this truth. Yeah. He is the truth. He wants to lead us to him. He will. There's a great outpouring coming, and I have high hopes. I have, and they're and they're good hopes. They're based in they're based in fact and in reality, faith. You know, uh, believing things that have not yet manifested. That's right. That, that the Lord is going to have the last laugh on this. We read the end of the book. He wins. We win with him. In the meantime, there's a great harvest to be had, and we need the truth to be undiluted in this time. Absolutely. Great discussion, Shooter. Thank you for joining us. We ask you to come visit us at thetruthandthelife.com, and we'll see you on the way. To learn more about The Way, visit thetruthandthelife.com. Send me your songs of tomorrow.